Hello, this is Christy Felk with Create with Christy. I'm here to share with you a Christmas card that I just made, and I used the beautiful bobble stamp set from the holiday catalog. This is one of the stamp sets that's retiring, so you only have till January 2nd to get it. It's a really pretty set. It does have dies that go along with it, but i am just using the stamp set today. And what I'm going to use is the ornament, the Deck the Hall stamp, and the Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year stamp. And I also used the Merry Christmas Thinlets dies. I love these dies, and thankfully these are going to stick around. I'm really happy about that. And I'm going to be using the Merry die for this one. And I'm going to teach you a little technique. I'm also using this galvanized metallic paper, and I'm going to emboss that and show you how you can color that. The galvanized paper is only available um, while supplies last, or January 2nd, whichever comes first. It's part of the things that are retiring in the Cajuns catalog. I love this metallic paper. I was really disappointed that's going to be gone. So I want to show you a little special thing you can do with that. Now let's go ahead and get started. This is also a square card. I decided to do a four and a quarter by four and a quarter square so it'll still fit in our regular medium envelopes. Okay, I'll go ahead and take a piece of Knight of Navy. This is the card base. So it's four and a quarter by eight and a half. I'm going to go ahead and fold that in half. Get my bone folder. The bone folder always gets the crease a lot nicer. Okay, and I went ahead and already embossed this. This is a four inch by four inch piece of pool party, and it was um, embossed with the um, swirls and curls textured embossing folder. This is also in the Occasions catalog, but this one is, I'm sorry, the holiday catalog. I got the Occasions catalog on my mind, but um, there's so many wonderful things in the holiday catalog. I want to make, make sure I make a lot of projects with this stuff first. And um, you can still get this after January 2nd. It's not going to be retiring, thankfully. And we'll go ahead and take the snail adhesive. And get definitely in the corners and along the sides. And just put that right in the middle of the card front. And we're going to go ahead and do the quick part of decorating the inside. Whenever it's a really dark cardstock, I always make sure to have a, a lighter color inside so you can write on it. This is what I did with the inside of the card. You can see, so I'll show you how to do that real quick. Take a, a piece of uh, Whisper White, it's four inch by four inch. I'm gonna bring my little Stampin' Pierce mat out and a little piece of grid paper because whenever you use photopolymer stamps, which is what this, these are, the completely clear ones, you wanna have this cushion underneath it. So I'm gonna take my Knight of Navy and stamp it. Right close to the middle, near the top though. But I want to leave a little space up here because I'm going to put some snowflakes up there. And then I'm going to take the Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year right under it. And stamp that in the Night of Navy. Go ahead and get that out of the way. And then take the pool party. And I'm going to take this little snowflake stamp that's also in the Beautiful Bobble set. And I'm just going to stamp it across the top. and across the bottom. I want to leave a little room here so you can put, uh, so I can write my name on it when I hand this out to people. And that's it. Okay, so the inside's ready. So go ahead and take my snail again and put it on the inside of my card. Just like so. And that's it. So the inside's done. So put this to the side. Now we'll do the little technique I'll be showing you. This is a three inch by three inch piece of the galvanized metallic paper. And I'm going to take an embossing buddy because we're going to do some uh, heat embossing on it. But I want to make sure all the moisture is outside of this because I don't want embossing powder sticking where I don't want it. So doing this takes any moisture out of the paper. Now I'm going to take the big ornament stamp that's in the beautiful bobble set. Put Versamark on it. Get it all covered and then stamp it close to the middle. Hold it down for a few seconds. And it will be sticking to it as you can see. Just peel it off. That's ready to go. Now I'm going to bring my silver embossing powder. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. And I've got a spoon here, but a lot of times I find it's easier to just, when I've got it in this container, just put my paper in here kind of move it around and tap it off and I'll even flick it a little bit on the back 
as you can see, I think you can see this in the video, hopefully you can, I've only got embossing powder on this part that I stamped. So that looks good to go. Take my heat tool, I should have, this will take a few seconds to heat up. But as it heats, you'll notice it'll start to melt and make the um, embossing powder shiny. So I'll just keep this going, put it in an angle so you can see it. You just keep it in place until you start to see it turn shiny. I can only see up there in the corner it's getting shiny. And I'll do the whole thing. Now that it's heated up, it's going to emboss it a lot faster. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we're going to color it in. I'm just going to kind of wave it a little bit to cool it off quick. I'm going to bring in some Stampin' Blends. I'm using the light Knight of Navy Stampin' Blend, the dark Granny Apple Green Stampin' Blend, and the dark Pool Party Stampin' Blend. And what I did, I decided to do the pool party for the base of the ornament. So I'm going to color this in. You can use either side. I tend to use the brush tip side because if you do it really lightly, you end up getting even finer point than the blunt part. So I'm just doing this very lightly. I just keep coloring it in until I get the desired effect I want. Okay, I saw the pool party, and as I was coloring that, I got to thinking, when you color, whenever you use regular markers, it would be okay if you colored over the embossing, but with the uh, alcohol markers, it really does dye the silver too. So if you get a little bit on there, it's okay. You can take a color lifter and remove some of the color, but you do want to be a little careful of that. It's not like the regular markers where you can wipe it off and have that emboss resist effect. Okay, now I'm going to bring the granny apple green in, and I'll get all these colored in for you. Okay, that's the end of the Granny Apple Green. Now, one thing, I did go ahead and cover over the embossing on this, this strip here, because those lines are so thin. Whenever you do stamp this, you'll see what I mean. But I wanted to go ahead and color over the embossing, too. That just made it a lot easier, and I think made a neat effect. And now the last color is the Light Night of Navy. Okay, it looks like I've got all the coloring done. Now, one thing, when I did my first one, the pool party lightened up on me. So after it was dry, I went ahead and went over it again with pool party to make it a little darker. But it looks pretty good today, so I think I'll go ahead and leave it the way it is. Like, I might have gone ahead and darkened that up a little bit, but I don't think I'm going to mess with that today. That looks pretty good. I love the subtle look that the blends uh, have on that brushed uh it's actually textured. If you ever have the galvanized metallic paper, it's textured. It's not like a regular foil. I just love how that looks. It looks really neat. Okay, now I'll go ahead, and it dries quickly since it's the alcohol markers. So I'll go ahead and put my adhesive on here. And this is a three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch piece of Knight of Navy. I'll just put that in the center. And I'm going to put that on Stampin' Dimensionals. So I'll go ahead and just Turn this over and put one in each corner. I could put one in the middle, but I don't think I'm going to bother with that because it's not that big of a piece. If it was a big piece, I'd worry about it falling down in the middle, but this one's one in each corner should be plenty. And we'll go ahead and put that right in the center of the card. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take a 12 inch piece of Whisper White Polka Dot Tula Tool Ribbon. I'm going to tie it into a bow. And usually when I do a bow, I, I'm right handed. You might do it the opposite way if you're left handed. But I only go just a, maybe at two inches at the most on here. Pinch those together, wrap it around my index finger because you want this to be a little longer on this end because it's going to be wrapped around your finger. Now one thing I found out with this tool, it's beautiful when you do the bow, but sometimes the tool likes to stick together, so you'll just have to play around with it, and that's what I'll do here. Get it to where it looks pretty good. 
Okay, now I'm going to take mini glue dots, put one here in the middle, and you do kind of have to help it a little bit being material, so I took it up with my uh, fingernail a little bit. I'm going to put that right there on the top of the ornament. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and trim the ends just a little bit. So I'll trim them at an angle. I kind of liked it being a little longer than I normally do for a bow. Okay, now we'll do the finishing touch. We're going to put the Mary across the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to use multi-purpose adhesive strips. These are sheets. We also sell these in the annual catalog. What I did, I took a 4 inch by 2 inch piece of uh, Night and Navy and the same size 4 inch by 2 inch piece of the adhesive sheets. You remove the Sizzix label off the back. This is where all the sticky part is. So I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to put it right over the Night and Navy piece. I'm going to bring my Big Shot in. Put this right here so you can see it. I have my magnetic platform, a standard cutting pad. I'm going to go ahead and put this in with the adhesive on the bottom. I'm going to grab the Mary die, put it in the middle, and then grab another standard cutting pad and put it on top and run it through the Big Shot. And with this being a little more ornate, I'm going to put it through twice here. I've also learned if you turn this around, sometimes it makes it cut even better. So I just want to make sure it's all cut without it moving on me. Put it through again because it makes it so the pressure is in a different spot because this may not have the same pressure all the way across. I definitely know there's more pressure in the, uh, on the sides than there are in the middle. So I'm going to turn this over and I can tell it got all the way through. So go ahead and get the big shot out of the way. Here's the die. I'm going to bring my take your pick tool. I'm going to use the pointed side. And I love the tips in this. So it's in there. Just unscrew it a little bit. Turn these around and I'm going to get my little um, paper piercer side. So take all these out. Little openings. And then I'm going to help the die come out by just putting it in a couple of these holes here. If I get one end going it does a pretty good job of coming out. There we go. And I think it's a little easier to start with the M side. It looks like all the little pieces are out. I'm going to go ahead and switch this back around because I'm going to be using this little tool here again in a minute. So we'll get that ready for the next step. Okay, there's my Mary. Get the die out of the way. Now I'm going to peel off the paper backing. There we go. Comes off pretty easy, especially once you get it started. And you do want to be a little careful. Looks like I might have pulled it a little hard, but you can put it right back into shape. If you do it too hard, it could, especially something this thin, it could hurt the shape of it. Okay, now I'm going to put the Mary right across here. And I'm going to be putting some, I should have done this first, some little... Um, droplets here, here, and here. So I want to make sure I'm not covering those up because I want those all to show. So the M is the only one that sticks up too far. So since I'm going to put one here, I'm going to make sure the M goes around it. This stuff is very sticky. There we go. There's my Mary. Isn't that pretty? I love the font of that. Okay, now I'm going to bring these are the little droplets I was talking about. These are frosted and clear epoxy droplets from the holiday catalog. Now these are also retiring, so they could sell out before the uh, January 2nd. What I'm using, I'm going to use the clear ones. Bring my Take Your Pick tool back out. Use the spatula part and pick up the clear small ones. I'm going to put one here because I want a little more bling on this one. Here we go here. Got a couple more. You could go with a frosted one too, and this one I just really liked the clear look to this one. Oops, got it stuck on my finger. There we go. Didn't that just set it off? I love that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm hoping to do more videos here in the future. Um, I just wanted to share this card with you because I just love this technique of doing it on the galvanized paper. And I want to show you how to do that so you can get your galvanized paper before it sells out. Uh, you can shop at my uh, website, www.createwithchristy.com and click shop now. 
And you can also follow me on my Facebook page, my Instagram page, and my Pinterest page. And I've got all the links below in the description of this video. And I'll also list the supplies and the dimensions I used on all of these. So if you don't have to have all those written down as you're watching the video, I've got that below. So I hope you come back and uh, see my videos. If you'd like to know whenever I post a video, make sure to subscribe below to my YouTube channel. Hope you have a great week.